How's it going, everybody? My name is Dominic, and I'm with Power Slap News. Joining me today is the one, the only, Anthony Green, the Predator. How's it going, man? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. Um, Thanks for joining us on such short notice. I think that's super awesome of you. Power Slap is this new sport, and it's blowing up pretty big. What are your thoughts so far on the sport? Oh, I love it, man. I love being part of it. It's, uh, of course, you know, it's got a good name behind it. Um, good people, you know, they also, it's an awesome organization, you know, it's, uh, you know, of course, everything's getting fine tuned. It's just brand new, but, uh, yeah, so far, man, I, I'm stoked to be part of it. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's cool. What are your thoughts on the way that the public seems to be kind of divided? Some people really love power slaps. Some people are saying it's the worst thing to come to combat sports in a long time. What do you think? Honestly, if everybody was the same, uh, the world would be pretty boring, you know? So uh, I feel, of course, there's going to be a lot of different mindsets and thoughts. And, uh, you know, of course, some people's, you know, uh, thoughts and whatever matter. But in the end, you know, it's uh, I feel that no matter how people look at it, you know, it's like the UFC. They were so against MMA and they couldn't believe that they were going to do it. And it's one of the world's biggest things. Well, I see that this could actually be that, you know, that's it's already overseas and everywhere else. It's it's going big. You know, they're they're making so much other slap events now that I think I feel that the UFC made the right decision in going this route. So yeah, and and we agree. I think we're in the same boat here. We we look at this and we compare it to other things like, you know, even MMA, where you can potentially get knocked out, be fully unconscious, and then eat follow up three, four, five blows slap mm -hmm. you know you're only taking three maybe four or five if there's a foul but generally right. you're signing up for three right yeah so. yeah it's and i've been fighting for you know since i was pretty much 18 19 years old i'm 32 you know so i've taken a lot of different hits you know not only by kicks el you know and elbows and fists and not only do you fight people that aren't always precise on how they hit you get hit in the back of the head you get hit in the back you know there's a lot more areas of your body that you can actually really injure yourself get paralyzed you know uh, even have brain damage this and that you know so for a lot of people saying oh well you're not defending rather you're defending yourself in mma or boxing there's always going to be that one move or this or that or twist or punch or elbow or kick that could potentially do the same thing that that one slap could potentially do that they're saying mm -hmm. you know so yeah you might not like it but oh well that's that's it's the game right we agree we don't right. think it's as bad as people are making it seem we do think no. there's we we're, we're comparing it the other day to these people that climb these mountains with no ropes you you make a right. mistake there and you die and yeah, there, there's no referee. Like I'm watching slap, and you get knocked down. Somebody's catching you. You're not even hitting yeah. the mat fully. Like it's, and, yeah. and that mat, that's a full pad. That mat, that canvas, it's it's so soft. Like it's it's softer than an MMA uh, ring, you know, or boxing mat. You know, it's it really is. You know, it's super yeah. soft. It's yeah, like you're saying. There's so many other sports out there. You know, like they got the Ninja Warriors. They got all this parkour stuff and all this skateboarding, bicycling, motocross. You know, it's all think about it. Yeah, so you can uh, jump over, yeah. jump over a helicopter, blade spinning. Nobody bats an eye, but you take a slap and yeah. the whole Twitter explodes. You know, it's right. pretty crazy. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you specifically, you because I believe your last fight was at um a special weight, the one or well, the last fight that we saw at least that on last night's episode. What yeah. do you think matters more? Because I've seen this debate on the Reddit, I've seen it on Twitter that height actually matters more than weight. And what are your thoughts as somebody who's participating? I I totally agree. You know, it's um if you look at the numbers. You know, for all of our uh, power, you know, with uh, how our speed, our hand size, all that, my numbers are up there with a lot of the heavyweight guys, you know, and, and I'm actually smaller than Robert. Robert weighed in at 153, and, uh, you know, I've seen that he, he said he was the smallest guy in the house. That's not true. Hmm. I was 144. He was 153. So I'm the smallest guy in the house, you know, and I actually walk around at that weight. You know, and we were supposed to be doing welterweight, 
and when they they decided to make this special division for lightweight i was up at 153 you know i was trying to make 155 156 so i was at the day of uh day before day and a half before weigh-ins i was already at 153 154 you know well once they they all of a sudden made that lightweight division i i totally cut back down to my normal weight you know so because that's where i felt healthy at you know and well i knew that once robert left the house to take his little break thing that he didn't really know that that lightweight division got put in place so i knew his weight was going to be bigger but like you're saying that's really not what mattered to me you know it's both people I fought are shorter than me, you know, and uh, that's what I feel has the advantage is of coming with that upper hit. You know, you're you're getting under that jaw. You're not you're not hitting square. You know, you you've got that upper momentum, and I, I honestly I feel like that's an advantage. You know, and that's why you know in some of my other interviews, um, I've definitely said you know even the some of the other guys that are in the heavier divisions, I feel I I would have a better matchup with them because they're at more my weight or my, excuse me, my height, you know, it's, you yeah. know, and, and I honestly feel that that does make a difference uh, of that height difference, I, you know, I've, because, you know, I've seen the debate um a few times on, on the Reddit yeah. and this and that, and people really saying like, yeah, having, having, especially these people now that they're, they're putting the, like the, the leg in it and they're getting the oh, momentum yeah. and coming up is a lot easier than coming down on somebody it's not yeah. the same. And that's where we should be looking at the sport, not maybe so much as weight class, but reach and height. And and I've right, seen it go right. both sides. It's a science. You know, you got to think of friction and gravity and all this and that. You know what I mean? It's like, well, that, you know, that plays a big effect. You know, it's so the velocity, all that, you know, and so it sucks, you know, and that's what I even said. I'm like, man, give me, I don't care. Give me these heavier guys. You know, it's, that's really not my thing. I'd rather go against somebody more my my height, you know, so it sucks. You know, I know that, you know, the, the fire with Robert could have went, you know, but. Yeah. Are you guys talking about this during the training? Are you guys, or is right now, because the sport's so new, everyone's kind of keeping the little secrets close to their chest, or, or are these things kind of getting bounced around? Like, hey, you want to be slapping up. You don't want to be slapping down. Like when you're, when you're training at the Institute, what are they, what are they pushing? Or is it just so new? Everyone's kind of feeling it out, taking No, steps? no, actually, you know, um, our coaches, you know, the destroyer and Wolverine, which was my coach, um, they got so much experience from, from their past slap fights that they, they've done, um, with their, their past slap fight league. Um, they had perfect, uh, routines and methods and they knew what works and what didn't work and how to, you know, because every fight's going to be different. Someone, someone's face is going to be different. Someone's height's going to be different. You know what I mean? So it don't even matter if you're in that Walter way, you know, it's like someone's jaw is different every time. So mm -hmm. you're going to want to position your hand differently. You're going to want to, you know, so that, you know, they, they definitely worked with us there. Um, and that's one of the things they actually said was, you know, a lot of, if you watch a lot of the, the fighters, they were doing that downward, you know, twist, you know, with their whole body, bringing it up from the ground, you know, and, and so no, that, that is huge. That is what, you know, technique is really, you know, something big. If you can get that twist down, and still have your technique, you're going to be a, a champion, you know, which is crazy. You know, like Chris Thomas, he doesn't really do that as much, but you know, knowing his backstory of how big of a guy he used to be to fighting at the weight that he's at, he's just got so much extra power in his arms that it, he doesn't really have to do that much bend mm -hmm. and twist in it. And yeah. Do you think the sport's still new that it's new enough that it those things may may change like the way that the step rule got changed pretty quick? Do you think that they maybe change like an upper body twist where you can't go below a certain I would hope so. Mm -hmm. Um you know what I mean it's like to an extent. I I feel like we should still be able to do it somewhat of a twist but to be able to pretty much bend all the way down to the ground and bring up like I just feel like that's a little bit much you know um but then again it takes a lot of accuracy to you know to really pull that off yeah it, it does risk. seem like an explosion of power though right it really does you know, it definitely is it definitely is and, and you know seeing my you know being hit by someone that does it that way and seeing it you can just tell the difference of somebody like say jesse nutting 
mm-hmm. that doesn't do that, you know, and he, he's strong. He's got a good chin. He's got a good hit, but he doesn't really have that strong of a windup or, uh, you know, compared to say Joel Scott that has this explosive, just wind up, you know what I mean? But it, it's a, yeah. <laughs> another big impact in the it's sport person, you know? it's like the height you're saying yeah. yeah but i was gonna say another big impact in the sport is the coin toss it's it's a huge, huge deciding factor it's absolutely huge do you think there's a better way to balance out the coin toss i've seen different debates online of maybe taking a point away so that the second fighter would then have the advantage at the end, whereas this fighter has the advantage in the beginning. I've seen all kinds of different debates. I've seen silly ones like they should have an arm wrestle to figure out <laughs> who goes first. Right. So what, what do you uh, think there's a better way or no, it's, it kind of is what it is. I feel that if they do it, I think the coin toss is pretty much the fairest way, really. Maybe if it's a rematch, um, or if it's like, say, it's a, for a title, maybe the number one guy might have the, the upper hand, you know, so maybe he gets the decision. That's just in maybe special circumstances, you know. I do feel a coin toss is pretty, it's pretty fair. You know, it's it's a 50-50 chance. It's all right. It's, you know, it's so. It's, I think, though, when they flip the coin, it should be flipped and then wherever it lands, it lands. It's no flipping the hand over. You know, yeah. you flip it and it lands in your hand. That's it. That's the that's the toss. You don't flip it and then flip it over. You know what I mean? Because if you looked in my my weigh ins, that's why I shook my head and, and I knew instantly. Because as soon as he flipped and it landed in his hand, I seen my collar facing up. You know, up. So I knew I lost. That I instantly before yeah. he flipped it over, I I knew you know because some refs. If you watch a coin toss, is some flip it up and they just land it, let it land in the hand, and that's what they call. Mm-hmm. Or some flip it up and then flip it over, and that's what mine did. And you know, what I mean, and I think that makes a big difference. For sure, that's a, that's a huge yeah. inconsistency, right? And and so that that kind of upset me. I, if you watch, if you rewatch the way, and you can see, I flexed my jaw and I looked away, and I was kind of upset. I was like, man, that's because. The coin toss is huge and definitely mm-hmm. going against Robert. You know, I know we both have power and I know we're both, we're going for gold, you know? So I knew that if he had first, he had enough power that if my jaw didn't hold up, he could take me out, mm-hmm. you know, and I, vice versa. You know, I knew that if I got the, the flip, I, I had enough that I could do the same. So what in I, football, they just let it hit the ground, right? They don't catch it in football. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's that's what my biggest thing about it was. It, you know, and, and if you watch throughout the season, you can see that that's a big, big thing is some do it, some don't. It's definitely not something I've noticed. But now that you've said it, I'm going to go back and I'm going to take a look. And and if that is a consistency, we, we're going to do a video on it. We're going to definitely talk about that because that's, that's something yeah. I don't think most people, besides people that are living it, are going to catch, right? It's a, well, it's a little thing, but it's a big difference. I'm big on technique, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm very visual, you know what I mean? So that's, I'm a contractor, you know, so when, once I do something and learn to, how to get to one place to where I have to go, you know, do a bid for a job or this, I'm very visual. I know how to get there the next time. I'm not always having to use my maps and stuff. Mm-hmm. Same thing when it comes to my fighting or weigh-ins or this, I, I watch my opponent. I watch the referees i watch the the spokesman i i watch everything that's happening and you know i mean and and definitely with all the video you know you just yeah so that's just something i'm big on you know is Mm -hmm. because the way i was raised i've always had to prove myself pretty much you know i mean so i've got in in this routine of always you know making sure i know for a fact before i say something you know and so um, sticking to the topic of coin toss, do you think there's any benefit to ever opting to going second, or is that just a mistake? Never go second. No way. You go, you you win a coin toss and you decide to go second. You're being cocky, and that cockiness has proven in the past fights that it's not the way to go. No, you so know? no, no strategy in going second. No, there are people out there that that would probably get in their head. It, you know, there are people out there. How many of them people are there? Mm. <laughs> They're getting slapped, not defending themselves. So they've kind of we're kind of cuckoo in, the, in some ways, anyhow. Or we've just got hit enough that we're willing to do it, whatever the fact of it is. Is 
I think it's dumb as oh get out. I, I wouldn't do it. I will never do it. I I win a coin toss. I will take the first lap every time. I'm not giving my slap up. No, I I I wouldn't either. Right? If you take the first <laughs> lap, I feel every time it's available to you. Yeah, um, for sure. Do you ever feel that life in the slap house is difficult dealing with all the drama and also getting getting assigned an opponent that now you're living with? How how is that like? Is there any real friction in there? No, you'll. Some people, yes. Me, personally, I'm a pretty laid-back guy, you know, so it, I know that I'm there to to take a title, you know, I, so I know that eventually, I, you know, the people that's in my weight division, I'm going to end up slapping. So, you know, rather I know I'm going against them at the beginning or at the end, it's not going to make a difference or, of how I'm living in that, you know, the that time, you know. So for me, no. And then also with me, I already knew I was going to go against Robert. You know, but then when he left the house, um, I didn't know if they, if he was going to come back or if he, you know, what was it, you know, so I was kind of in, in like, oh man, well now who am I going against and who's, so when there's circumstances like that, I guess you kind of, you know, I kind of, it depends on the circumstance or the, you know, but not, not no, really. No real mind games, no trying to get in each other's heads, nothing like that. No, you know, um, uh, not really, you know. I know that I have opponents that, you know, there's a few opponents that I'm going against here in the near future that definitely are that kind of person. But I'm just I'm just not the shit talking person, really, mm -hmm. you know, unless I really don't like you like Waylon. I don't like that. That dude, you know, what I mean, so um, on the topic of getting into each other's heads, do you think it matters the call? Like if you're somebody who's a right hand on one, is that does that shake somebody up or it's the middle of the fight and you switch to a left hand? Are you as an opponent? Are you getting shooken up like, oh, what's happening? Or is that no, no threat? Yes and no. It kind of depends on, on, you know, you that first strike, you know, once you take that first hit and you get, if you, you know, survive that first hit, um, you kind of know the guy's power. You, you kind of know what to look forward to. So I guess if they switch it up, you know, it's, you never know if they were using their weaker hand in, in the first place, if they actually have a better hand or if they're better with, you know, so I guess that could maybe play a part, um, me personally, I wouldn't switch my hands up. I want to. I want to eat your jaw on one side of it. You know, I want to weaken that one side. I don't want to give you a chance to recover on that one side. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. that that was going to be my follow up. Was uh, do you think it's worth powering the damage to one side, or is it you do rattle them more if you mess up both equilibriums? Right, you kind of hit them on both sides. Uh, you can, uh, but. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, I think we need to try to get uh, Caris Archer on yeah, an interview and ask him because I know that he's uh, he he's definitely switched his hands. So I'm not I'm not waiting against anybody that's done it, and I know personally I'm not gonna do it. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Um, I do want to talk about the last <laughs> fight we saw last night against Robert. Right. Sadly, yeah. ended in that first round knockout. Everybody saw that. As a fighter, what does it take to bounce back from that mentally? Or are you somebody that you put on some headphones, listen to your favorite song, Power Walk, and you're good to go? Or do you call the family, see, like, you know, what, uh, what brings you back to, like, keep going? I was good at probably, I don't know, half hour, hour after the fight. I was good. It is, you know, I'm a fighter. I've been doing it for so so long. I've got so many different kind of fights done and, and been through it so much that the, the event's over. It is what it is. Yeah. I, you know, you know, you heard last night. I hate to lose. I I can't stand losing, but I'm not a poor sport. You know, it's a, and definitely in this power slap, it's that coin toss it, is a big thing, and and you know, it's it, anything could happen. So, and honestly, I think it only takes what three to six pounds uh, of pressure to really actually knock somebody out. Catching that button, if you have accurate enough, you know, you really don't even have to hit that hard as long as you're hitting in that right that right spot and he just so happened to to catch me you know and you know i i do i've got a pretty strong chin i work my chin out you know uh probably more than anybody in, in the way that i do you know i don't think anyone really works does the the workout i do but i've definitely yeah so i want to elaborate on that a little bit do you think it's more working out the chin or is it working out the neck strength it, i feel like it's both i am i've worked out my chin um a lot throughout my career um, I, 
I, I, I fight light, you know what I mean? So I don't really like to put on too much and, um, I'm tall, you know, so it's kind of really, I kind of just, my weight's pretty dispersed, you know, so, but now I've actually, I've changed my diet, you know, and I'm actually working on building my neck and actually building my upper body. You know, I still want my lower body to be strong because you still want to be able to be stabilized and have the muscles to be able to still absorb all the way down your body. Just because you're getting hit up here doesn't mean the rest of your body's not getting some, you know, effect of it. So, of course, I want to keep the rest of my body. But no, I felt like it, it the chin was going to be the biggest uh, part of it. But seeing some of the guys that are in the events and seeing their body builds and their styles, I feel like the neck is definitely going to be a big part with helping bracing and taking that that impact. So I've kind of changed to my, my thought process and more went over towards uh, going towards strengthening my neck, you know, and so. That's what I've been working on since my last event against Robert. Well, you, you did seem to recover fast. I remember like you were uh, walking down the stairs. They were trying to help you and you were, you're brushing them off. Like, I'm good. Leave me alone. Yeah. That's you, you did seem to bounce back fast. I just wanted to know, like, does it, does it really take a toll, you know, mentally to, to really come back? But it sounds like, no, sounds like you're, you're a professional, you know what you're doing and, and you're yeah. in there for what it is. Uh, yeah. I just, I, don't like, I just didn't like to lose. You know, I mean, I just didn't want anyone to touch me because I, I was I was upset I lost. You know, once I, I came to and I realized that I got knocked out, I knew that I, I lost. And this was something that I really wanted. You know, I wanted to be able to, you know, get that title. And I still I still know that I, I have it in me to be able to come back and hopefully get a chance to still climb that ladder to get to that title. So. Oh, for sure. I don't I definitely don't think we've seen the last of you. That's it for my questions. That's all I got. Do you got anything you want to let the people know? Anything you want to shout out? Anything along those lines? By all means, the floor is yours. Yeah. Um, hey, I appreciate it. everybody, you know, uh, watching Power Slap Road to the Title. You know, that's definitely new. You know, if you don't like it, you know, just just keep an open mind. You know, there there's a lot of different uh thought processes you know just let the let, let the sport grow a little bit you know just give it a chance you know there's uh, a lot of things that still got to be fixed and, and worked on and follow me you know uh, i know i got a lot of uh, fans that i need to to catch and to, to you know keep so you know I, I, there's a lot more i got you know to to offer so yeah I agree. I think people that are looking at slap and in that negative light need to go on YouTube and uh, look at those people that go squeezing through caves and all this other craziness that's right. out there and compare and you know, what's the risk other people are taking for the sports they love. And I don't think I don't honestly, I don't think it's that bad. I think it's entertaining. I think you guys know what you're doing. I think you guys are professionals. And there is, like you said, it's a good squad behind it. There's a good level of care there. And I do think the fighters or strikers, whatever they want to go by, are getting uh getting getting the the love and that they're that they that they deserve. So thank that's you so right. much for joining us. And I think that's it for us. <laughs> <laughs>